2020 has been some year, hasn't it? And if you haven't learned valuable lessons about how you tick, then you're either a Zen master or, well, I don't really know what you are. Along with the same challenges that everyone else has faced this year, my family and I have had some extra hurdles to overcome that have made me focus on how and where I spend my energy and time. I've tried quite a few things out to try and free up my brain CPU and my emotional reserves so I can focus on the most fundamentally important things in my life, my family and my own mental state. So here are the ones that have worked for me and I've tried lots that didn't stick and some that plain didn't work and I learned very quickly not to beat myself up over those failures. I don't really believe failure is a dirty word if you learn from it and move forwards. These ideas are super simple to implement and the impact on me has been quite extraordinary to the point where I feel a little bit stupid for having not done them earlier. Here they are. At the start of lockdown, I was increasingly aware at the toxicity and banality of what I was reading on Facebook, engaging in conversations that led nowhere and into discussions with people who aren't interested in listening. As someone once said, you log into and out of Facebook for the same reason, because you're bored. I had a sudden realisation one day that I simply didn't care what I was reading or seeing and it was bringing nothing positive to my life at all, quite the opposite. Anxiety and stress that I was using up precious hours in my day for something I didn't really have the time or space for in my life. So that was it, delete the app. Get rid of the shortcut, out of sight, out of mind. Well, almost. It took about a week or so for my brain wiring to let it go. My go-to habit instead of reaching for the fag packet, but it didn't take long. I didn't need to be occupied all the time and sometimes it's good to just not do anything. Certainly not reading statuses I don't really care about, about people I met at a drum show 15 years ago and can't really remember. Looking at pictures of people's dinners, reading their rants about Brexit, Trump, Covid, parking, their partners, their kid, their jobs, their anything. You know what? The people I do care about, I know about. I don't need to read it in a public post online. I just don't need it there all the time, checking and scrolling 15, 20, 30 times a day with no input, no positive outcome. I still have my account because my businesses have pages, but I check them perhaps every three or four days. I still have Messenger on my phone, and more about that in a minute. So I type Facebook in the URL, briefly scroll through the 100 or so notifications, look at about five of the ones that might be of interest, rarely leave a comment, and then log back out again. I log it back out of my life. Weeks ago I bought a bedside light and now my phone spends the night charging in the kitchen next to the microwave. I noticed a couple of weeks ago that I'd go to bed about 10.30, set my alarm on my phone and the next thing I'd know it was 11.30 or 12 o'clock. Quick check of my emails, I scroll through Instagram, all oh, that camera lens I was interested in. Let's have a look at that on eBay. What about my YouTube metrics? Has anything interesting happened on Instagram in the last 35 seconds? Oh yeah, what was that helmet Alex Dowsett was wearing at the World Championships? How much are they? What research has been done on their coefficient of drag? Wait, wasn't I going to bed? Ah, oh, did I set my alarm? And all that stopped now, along with starting the day staring at my phone. Sometimes I just lay in bed and do nothing for 10 minutes and it's really nice. Or I get up and have a coffee or maybe go for a run. Sometimes I don't look at my phone for hours into the day, not through choice. I'm not abstaining and I'm not denying myself like a monk. Again, after a week or so, I lost the bond that I craved, that constant dopamine top up we get from our phones. We get a little dose of dopamine just before we pick up our phone to check it. And interestingly, it's just before we pick up our phone, not whilst. Due to the expectation of something exciting, an email saying we've been asked to make a film with Wes Anderson or a text from Stevie Wonder asking to do his next tour or how about Lionel Sanders asking me to coach him. Exciting, dopamine, but no. It's an email from that company you bought your mum's birthday present from last August telling you about their new bath towel collection and you really should have unsubscribed from that, but you don't, you never do. And so it goes on, mini dopamine hit, mini cortisol hit, and repeat. Humans aren't really designed to deal with this neurotransmitter roller coaster all the time. No wonder our minds have been bent out of shape a little bit. So I did a bit more reading on this, and I started to see and feel the benefits of such a simple action as leaving the phone downstairs overnight. There are several, not least the social interaction with the person you share a bed with, if you're lucky to do so. The reduced blue screen time leading to increased sleep quality, but the most interesting thing I read was an article explaining about how when you wake up in the morning and immediately looking at your phone leads you spending your whole day reacting. You become reactive to things. You're constantly doing things that you're being told to react to and it sets you up for a day like this. It's a constant day of stressing and checking and reacting, like a good little worker bee. What's the phone telling you to do next? 
Phones are amazing tools, but the hammer doesn't dictate what the carpenter does. This further research led me to the third thing on my list of hacks. I discussed some of the things I'd found out and had been doing with some of my uni students and a few of them suggested changing my notifications, which I'd not even thought of. I've no idea why, but every time I'd pick up my phone, I'd been confronted with everything that I needed to react to. 15 Instagram notifications, 25 Twitter notifications, three texts, I'm not very popular, 12 Outlook emails, seven Gmails, no Facebook notifications, of course, nine WhatsApp messages, three Messenger notifications, 256 Slack notifications, come on, react, deal with them all now. So into seconds I go, notifications off, 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 off. I choose when to look at them in my time. Nothing so urgent that someone won't ring you if they need you. I don't if you have that app, the phone app, but I'd highly recommend getting it on your phone. I have text net notifications on as that's how my wife Bex gets in touch with me mostly, so I only have text and phone notifications and that's it. Everything else is my choice to check in my own time. Perhaps mid-morning, perhaps lunchtime, whenever I need to, but it's my choice. I expected my productivity to go down and for people to be chasing me for email replies, but the truth is that I'm more productive with these things out of my life. The average person spends about 144 minutes a day on social media. Reducing the mindless element of this means I have more time to make stuff. Videos, music, time with my family, running, riding my bike, or sometimes, do you know what? Nothing at all. I can watch an entire film on Netflix without looking at my phone once, but more importantly, there is no urge to either. Try some of these things out. Don't beat yourself up if they don't work for you. Just keep searching for the ones that do. These three have stuck for me, but they may not for you. The real key is not to accept the workflow that technology dictates. We dictate the workflow, not the preset settings. And don't think for a minute I'm knocking social media. I love following cycling on Twitter, checking out Peter McKinnon's banger of an Instagram feed, or Casey Neistat's sporadically brilliant storytelling on YouTube. It's just that I choose what to look at and when. I pick up the hammer. What could you do with an extra 144 minutes a day? You can do a lot with the best part of two and a half hours. Social media usage is going up to an increase of users by 10% in the last year, and most of it is mindless in my personal experience. Do you want to reduce it to zero hours? Of course not. Social media can be entertaining, educating, and therefore fun. But the next time you hear yourself saying, I didn't have time for a run today, just remember it's probably because you were scrolling through Instagram. <laughs>